Churchboro, Ohio, and woke up to St. Thomas Lutheran Church here in the square in downtown Streetsboro. It's the fourth Sunday in Lent. Our service starts here in about five minutes. Y'all, it's almost nine o'clock. If you didn't set your clocks ahead last night, it's only saying eight o'clock, but it's nine o'clock. Everybody have a good morning. We're broadcasting Low Power FM around the church at 96.9. Y'all have a great day. Yes, there's snow outside.
am much shorter. Yeah, Pastor Clay. <laughs> much taller. Uh, are there any announcements that we need to shout out? Okay, thanks for that change for the Good Friday service times. Lynn. If anybody um, is still interested in doing some recipes for um, the youth group, they're trying to um, collect money for their church to the Ohio, I guess, I guess it's called the youth group, 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 Thank you for that. Are there any other announcements? Deb. Okay. All the other announcements are in your bulletin. So if there's none others, we'll begin our worship with our entrance hymn, Amazing Grace, number 448 in the green hymnal. Oh, uh-huh. 
mercy on us, Lord. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Remember your love and your faithfulness, O Lord. Remember your people and have mercy on us, Lord. Let us pray. God of all mercy, by your power to heal and to forgive, graciously cleanse us from all sin and make us strong. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. first lesson is found in the book of Numbers, chapter 21, starting with the fourth verse. From Mount Horeb, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became, became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that, they, that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, 
make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole, and if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 107, verses 1 through 9. We'll read it responsively. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And gathered in from the lands. Some wandered in the desert wastes, hungry and thirsty. Then they cried to the Lord in trouble. He led them by a straight way. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson is found in Ephesians chapter 2, starting with the first verse. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, The Holy Gospel according to John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Paul vividly describes the dilemma of humankind in our epistle reading this Sunday. You were dead in trespasses and sin. We all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath. We were born in sin, alienated from God. That is what Paul means when he says we were by nature children of wrath and we were helpless to save ourselves. Paul says we were dead, just like corpses, unable to do anything to save ourselves or one another from our sins and the judgment of God. Sin is no light matter. Sin is rebellion against God, rebellion against our Creator, the source of all life. If we rebel against our Creator, and seek to separate ourselves from him, there can only be one end, death. Because apart from life, there is only death. Literally and figuratively, then, the problem of humanity is that they are born dead in their sin. Lest we mistakenly blame God, we should realize that God did not make us this way. Humankind was created very good, as is written in Genesis 1.31. That is, humanity was created perfect, without sin, at one with their creator, free from disease and suffering, and full of life. However, mankind sought to do things their way instead of remaining in the life given by their creator. They sought to create their own way of life instead of respecting the commandments of their merciful Lord, which were meant to protect his gifts. Eat not from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, lest you shall surely die, God warned. Yet man ate from the tree and so forfeited the gift of life for him and his progeny. As scripture tells us, through one man's sin, death entered the world, and sin brings us death. We reveal that we were cut from the same rebellious cloth that our ancestors were when we break God's commandments and so neglect our Creator's gifts. We neglect God's gift of a good reputation when we talk about someone behind their back. We neglect God's gift of his name, which we should call upon in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks, whenever we fail, whenever we use it as a throwaway word. We neglect God's gift of life, whenever we fail to thank him for giving us life, for giving us house, family, jobs, or even simply the air we breathe and instead seek fulfillment in material belongings. These are all sins revealing that we are sinners. Sinners descended from, Evan, from Adam. Sinners from conception. Sinners incapable of saving themselves. Since our Creator did not make us with sin, He created all of His creation good, free from the effects of sin. Sin and his effects are solely on the plate of those who commit sin. Humanity is to blame for their dilemma. As Paul says in Romans, Therefore God gave them up in their lusts and their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, and receiving in themselves the penalty, the penalty for their error. Yet all is not lost and hopeless, because God has seen our dilemma and provided an answer. From Ephesians 2, But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, 
made us alive together with Christ. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Instead of condemning us for our sin and leaving us to reap their reward, God the Father sent his Son to save us from sin and its consequences, the brokenness of creation. As our Lord declares in John chapter 3, For God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to judge the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. God the Father sent his Son into our broken world to take our sin upon himself. For this reason, Jesus was lifted on the tree of the cross to deliver the world from sin and death. Through faith, a blessed exchange occurs. Jesus takes all of your sin and its guilt upon himself and gives you his righteousness. Therefore, there is no longer any judgment for you. As it is written, whoever believes in Jesus is not judged. In return, Jesus gives you what belongs to him, his righteousness, everlasting life, the Father's favor and compassion, and new life. The tree of the cross becomes the tree of life for all those who look to it in faith. And since you are righteous in God's sight, an heir of eternal life, and have a wonderful Father, you not, need not fear the suffering of this world. Yes, this world still has suffering because it still bears witness to the effect of sin. But as an heir of eternal life, you will be delivered from the broken world and inherit a renewed heaven and renewed earth of this world. Moreover, because you have Christ's righteousness, you can also be sure that you have a merciful Father in this life who hears your cries for help, who is looking out for your best interest, and who is on your side. Since you are forgiven, the suffering you experience in this world is not punishment for your sin. It is the only testimony to the fact that this broken world is passing away, giving way to your deliverance, and giving way to eternal life. God has saved you by grace, that is, because he loves you, and he will see you through to the end. Amen. Our hymn of the day, number 98 in the green hymnal. <coughs>
Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord God, Draw us into your light. Expose wherever we, like your people of old, have thought, spoken, and acted against you, that in repentance we might look to your Son lifted up on the cross and be saved from your righteous wrath. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, you gave your only Son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Bless the work of missionaries as they carry this gospel to the ends of the earth, that many may hear of your love in Christ Jesus and be saved through him. Lord, in your mercy. Your Almighty God, you have set Joseph, our president, and Mike, our governor, as authorities over us for our good. Bless and sustain them with all they need to govern us, that we might be ruled wisely and in accord with your will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Heavenly Father, you had Moses lift up the bronze serpent in the wilderness, thereby foreshadowing your sons lifting up on the cross. Teach us to hear in the Old Testament the promises and pictures of the coming Christ, who is their Savior and ours. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you are our light and our salvation. Hide in your shelter, Gilbert, Trudy, Pelagia, Robin, Laureen, <coughs> Becky, Marla, Timothy, Carol, Heather, Deb, and Deb, friend of Deb, who has recent neck spine surgery. We also pray for all who suffer in body, mind, or soul. Keep them in their day of trouble from falling into faithless fear and uphold them with your peace in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O Lord, whose steadfast love endures forever, we lift up your voices in thanksgiving. You have redeemed us out of trouble and gathered us here to feed us, so that our souls may not faint within us. Satisfy the longing of our hearts with your Son's good things, his body and blood, that we may abide in your eternal peace. Lord, in your mercy. 
Gracious Lord, you have made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Cause your spirit to be at work in us that we may not carry out the sinful desires of our bodies and minds, but be your workmanship in Christ Jesus, walking in the good works he has prepared for us. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share peace with one another. Yeah, it is pretty. Peace with you, Nicole. Peace with you, Gay. <laughs> Big house. Peace with you. Peace with you. Rats.
Thank you, Lord, for all the good things that you have given us. Make our lives dedicated to you in response. Use us and these gifts to help those in need. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless us and keep us. Amen. Our closing hymn, number 377. Serve the Lord.